Auto Line Daily is brought to you by Bridgestone, your journey, our passion. Dow Automotive Systems, improving durability and increasing design flexibility with Betamate structural adhesives at DowBetamate.com. And by Hyundai. Experience the 2011 Hyundai Sonata today at HyundaiSonata.com. This is AutoLine Daily for November 22nd, and here is what's happening in the industry. In a move that probably did not surprise anyone, Laura Suave was let go as the head of the Fiat car brand in the American market. Sales of the little Fiat 500 came nowhere near the 50,000 unit sales goal that Chrysler CEO Sergio Marchionne set for the car. According to Wards, sales through October were only 15,826 cars, and a key reason why Fiat missed its target by such a wide margin is that it was extremely slow to sign up American dealers. And that's why Laura Suave is being replaced by Timothy Kuniskis, who's worked at Chrysler for 19 years, most recently as head of Fiat marketing in the U.S. But here's my AutoLine insight. Suave was handed an impossible sales goal. No way is Fiat going to sell that many 500s in the U.S., especially when the dealers only have one model in the showroom. They need at least three more models to bring in more customers. But even with that, I think Fiat would be lucky to sell 50,000 Cinquecentos in all of North America. But this is also indicative of Sergio's M.O. If something's not working, he doesn't waste time. He gets rid of whoever is in charge and tries someone else. Speaking of personnel moves, General Motors appointed its vice chairman, Steve Gursky, as the chairman of the supervisory board of Opal. And just to make sure he's got the muscle he needs, GM CFO Dan Ammon is joining him there as well as the president of GM's international operations, Tim Lee. Opal needs to take drastic actions to get its costs and capacity in line with market realities. That means closing plants and laying off workers in Germany, and that is going to be a battle royale, hence the reason to give Gursky some backup. Now that the UAW and the Detroit automakers have reached labor agreements, the union says, it's going after those pesky transplants. The Detroit News reports that the UAW is training organizers for informational picketing at foreign dealerships. They'll hand out leaflets explaining the benefits of joining a union, but foreign car dealers are hopping mad about that. They don't want customers distracted from buying a new car. If you thought that the Volt is expensive here in the U.S., good thing you don't live in China. The Detroit News reports that the Volt will cost more than $75,000 when it goes on sale in eight cities in the Middle Kingdom. Since the Volt is built in Detroit and exported to China, it gets hit with a hefty import tariff and it does not qualify for a tax credit of nearly $20,000 for EVs. GM CEO Dan Ackerson says, if the Volt starts selling well in China, it will consider building it in the country. But I'm telling you, at 75 grand, it ain't gonna sell at all. Three car makers really dominate automotive exports from China, Chang'an, Cherry, and Great Wall. Not wanting to miss out on all the fun and profits, SAIC GM is challenging them with its very inexpensive Wuling vans. They'll start building the Chevrolet Move in Egypt starting next year, assembled from knockdown kits with a goal of about 5,000 sales a year. You know, that's very smart of GM and SAIC to compete against domestic Chinese automakers in emerging markets. Interesting article from Bloomberg. Fiat is working on a common design language for sister brands, Chrysler and Lancia. The move is aimed at saving money and more than doubling global sales to 800,000 a year by 2014. The common design cues will have to work on a wide array of different vehicles, from subcompacts to minivans and in a number of different markets. That is a very tall order. With the shaky economy and Eurozone debt issues moving more metal in Italy, 
where Lancia sells about 90% of its cars is going to be very, very challenging. That tells me the lion's share of the growth is going to have to come from Chrysler. Coming up next, we're going to take a look at the Chevy Sonic, and we'll be back right after this. Look at this. Bridgestone's using natural rubber, researching ways to enhance its quality and performance, and making their factories more environmentally friendly, producing products that save on fuel and emissions, and some that can be reused again, and promoting eco-friendly and safety driving campaigns. One team, one planet. Bridgestone. When you want something better, aspire. The subcompact segment has never been a bright spot for Detroit. The Ford Aspire and Geo slash Chevy Metro spelled this failure out with a capital F. But Motown's latest B segment offerings are revving things up. The Fiesta is a great choice, and GM's newest subcompact promises to atone for some of its past sins. I'm talking, of course, about the Chevrolet Sonic. This spunky little car is available as either a sedan or a hatchback, and either way, it hits the road with big car features like a tilt and telescoping steering column, OnStar connectivity, and a roomy, quiet interior. When it comes to target markets for the Sonic, Chevrolet sees college campuses and urban areas like San Francisco as great opportunities because, according to their research, it's home to the perfect kind of buyer. From the beginning, we have had millennials as our target. That meant everything from the product decisions we made to the marketing communications strategy to even how we prepare our dealers for a whole new group of customers. And one thing these younger buyers will appreciate about the Sonic is its affordable price, just $15,000 for an entry-level model. That includes a 1.8-liter four-cylinder engine and 138 horsepower. A five-speed manual or a six-speed automatic are the two transmission choices. More performance-oriented customers can opt for a 1.4 turbo. Horsepower is the same as the base engine, but it delivers a much fatter chunk of torque with a peak of 148 pound-feet. For now, a six-speed manual is the only gearbox available with this engine, but come springtime, an auto will be offered. Safety is another key component of the Sonic, and it's something that was baked right into its architecture from day one. Our body structure is the same around the world, and we went in with the fundamental philosophy that every market, it will be top in its safety segment, whether it's Euro NCAP or five-star, five-star in the U.S. or Korean top safety pick. We, we knew that going in, so fundamentally from the beginning we had the car set up to do that. So it was easy to tweak it for, for the regions and uh, we feel like we've got a, a really strong competitor that's really quick and agile but then tuned right for the roads in the U.S. so that you don't, you don't have this harshness or this nervousness as you do some of the, the maneuvers. The car's safety ratings and fun driving dynamics are great news for buyers and they're things GM is very proud of. But that's not all the company has to brag about. Right now, it's the only subcompact sold in the U.S. that's actually made in the U.S. The Fiesta can't make that claim, nor can the Fit, Versa, Accent, or Yaris. The Sonic is the second in a trio of small cars Chevrolet is introducing. It's a bridge between the compact Cruze and the A-segment Spark, which should launch in North America in about a year or so. Reporting from San Francisco, California for Autoline Daily, I'm Craig Cole. Another way Chevy is helping the Sonic stand out from the crowd is through personalization. It's offering buyers a variety of different body graphics to choose from so they can really personalize their cars. The selection was created by GM's design staff and can be added to any Sonic as a dealer installed option. And that wraps up today's show. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow.